these are my two guys. up the electrical compartment get all that dirt out of the way make sure the coolers are clean make sure you can see through them Let's check the contactor This one looks pretty good. Let me make sure we'll have the proper voltage going to it. See that the bolt's AC. Here's my power coming in on the top. So I'm going to go from 1 to 2. Got two twelve, one to three, two thirteen, and two to three, two fourteen. So that looks good. As you can see the coil, you see that light through it. That's a good sign, that means you got a clear coil. Now I'm on the freezer. All right. So both this is a freezer. So both freezers will have a defrost clock because that coil gets so cold. Once in a while, you need to de-ice it. So this is just like a regular analog watch, basically. And you can see it's almost in defrost. This is 15 minute increments. So each pin is 15 minutes. So it's 15, 30, 45 minutes. 45 minute defrost about every six hours. Which is pretty normal. And what that does is it's basically This one has uh, electric heaters at the coil. Those heaters are going to energize and for about 15 minutes and just thaw all the ice that's on the, built up on the coil as it was running. So, of course, if it gets too hot and it reaches the temperature, there's a termination. It'll tell it to uh it'll say hey I've reached the temperature where it's safe to come out so it'll come out of defrost prior to the 45 minute increment if it reach reach that temperature or if it hasn't you know regardless if it reaches 45 minutes it'll come on whichever comes first and then this one has the LED to indicate refrigeration and the red one would, would indicate defrost is on so right now the refrigeration. Now I'm going to initiate defrost. The red light is on now. And then the unit's going to pump down by itself. It's going to close the solenoid and it shut off via low pressure switch. 
That way you don't have cold refrigerant in the in the evap while it's trying. To... So that's basically the defrost clock. Of course, you got the contactor that pushes in, then your low pressure switch, and that's set up. Cut in is cut out plus differential. So that's set up at 15 psi. Cut out is set up to about 5 4 psi. So once it hits 5 4 psi, it'll shut off so it doesn't go into a vacuum. So I'll, I'll ground it up to 5, 5 plus 15. So at 20 psi is when it cuts back on. And then, what you can also do, make sure your contact is good. Even if it doesn't look like it's burnt or pitted, you can check for any voltage drop. So this contact is closed. So I should have no voltage differential between this terminal and this terminal and all three legs. So I should read close to zero, if not zero or point something from here to here. That's what I got. 0.04. We can check. This is the second leg. This is the third leg. They all look good. And you can put your gauges on to make sure it's cutting out properly. Sometimes these act up. And uh, you know, adjust it, make sure it's not going into a vacuum, make sure it's cutting on properly. Sight glass. Just want to make sure it's not bumpy. You want me to get a full sight glass. So this one looks clear on this one too. Overall, they're both in pretty good shape. So now I'm gonna head down and check the. They have a little reach in. And then also check the evaporators for those two condensers and clear the drains. Alright, this one is the freezer. It is 10 degrees in here. So because this is a freezer, you know, below 32 degrees in the box, you have to insulate the drain. It has to be ran in copper. And you have to run a heat tape to it. And see that heat tape just plugged into an outlet, so it's getting 120 volt source of power. And uh, you know, then it's just warming up, keeping it just above, you know, 32 degrees. And then you just kind of wrap it around the drain line, and then insulate it. Got to make sure it doesn't turn to ice. And then the water is just going to build up in this pan, and you'll start seeing it overflowing. And this drain line. It ran into the walk-in cooler, which is on the other side. All right, here's the walk-in cooler. So because the cooler does not stay below 32 degrees, it's usually set between 34 and 40. Right now it's at 35. So it's not below freezing, so you're not, you don't have to run a heat tape and insulate the drain line. So this is the one that was coming from the freezer. See, they stopped insulating in here because it's not required. And then you have your trap, and then it goes down, and I'll show you the the drain. It's just draining into a floor drain outside. And the freezer has one too. It's just insulated, so you can see. But there's a service port, so you can take this off. Um, if it's really clogged, you grab a water hose and spray the nozzle through there and flush force all the dirt through the trap and all that outside the drain line. And then you have a unit in here you can take apart if in case it's clogged up up here or in the pan or however you want to do it. This coil is pretty dirty. I'm uh, I'll have to clean this one.
right, we're in the water hose in here with my wand. I got my coil cleaner. I'm just kind of moving these out of the way so I don't get them all wet. So I'm going to set this to shower. Alright, I just hit the breaker. Just kind of pre-wet it. Alright, so it's been a few minutes. Go ahead and start rinsing this off. Much, much better. So you can see through it. Couldn't feel much on the last one because that's right up at the front, and you know they got customers and and whatnot right there, so I don't want to be a bother. So not much of that one though. Just a basic refrigeration PM.